HMS Janus was a J-Class destroyer, the immediate successor class to the Tribals, and the J-Class can essentially be described as a Tribal but scaled down 10% and swapping one of the aft twin 4.7 inch mounts for an additional set of torpedo launchers. Laid down at the end of September 1937, launched in November 1938, and commissioned at the start of August 1939, the ship still had that fresh paint smell lingering in the corridors when World War II broke out. Based out of the Humber estuary to start with, Janus was rapidly assigned to convoy escort duty, taking convoy OA-2 under her protection just six days after the war broke out. This activity would continue for the rest of the month before she then sailed the following month as part of a massive Royal Navy deployment that included Hood, Repulse, Nelson, Rodney, Furious, six cruisers and 18 destroyers that aimed to catch a German force consisting of Gneisenau, the cruiser Köln, and nine destroyers. However, it was actually bait laid by the Germans for a Luftwaffe trap, although in the event the most damage that was caused to anyone was two British destroyers that bumped into terrain on their way back into harbour. Then it was back to convoy escort duties, with more excitement in April 1940 when the convoys were troop and supply movements to Norway. This meant more Luftwaffe attention and having to sink the sloop Bittern after taking off survivors as the sloop had been hit by Stukas and could not be towed to safety. But with the conclusion of the Norway campaign gutting the Kriegsmarine's destroyer forces, Janus was reassigned to the Mediterranean, making the run to Alexandria in May, which meant she soon found herself taking part in, or screening, a number of shore bombardment operations alongside the more usual convoy escort work. This placement in the Med also meant she got a front row seat to the Battle of Calabria, although as part of the escort for the slower Royal Sovereign and Malaya in Force C, she was not able to get directly into the action alongside Force B, which was led by Warspite. Apart from the occasional bombardment mission, it was then back to convoy escort work until the end of the year, when the destroyer Hyperion hit a mine, and after another destroyer, Ilex, took, over, took the survivors away, Janus was once again tasked with sinking an irrevocably damaged friendly vessel. After providing distant cover for the Operation Excess convoy, in which the Luftwaffe almost hit her, she assisted in extracting the patched-up HMS Illustrious from Malta, and then at the end of March 1941 was part of the escort forces at the Battle of Cape Matapan, although once again she was escorting the force that didn't engage during the night action, that being the British cruiser formation. This year-and-a-half run came to an end the following month when, assigned to a formation sent out to attack Axis convoys, she helped to sink three Italian destroyers, five merchant ships, and an armed escort freighter. And then she was assigned to Force D during the invasion of Crete, thus helping to sink the seaborne component of the Axis invasion forces, all of which totaled up to a pretty impressive score in a short period of time for a destroyer. Shortly thereafter, she helped in a series of nighttime evacuations from Crete, again escaping without damage. Summer saw a joint British and Free French operation to take Syria away from Vichy control, and here Janus found herself facing off against two Vichy destroyers, Guepard and Valmy, which collectively outmassed her by a factor of three. She managed to hold out against them despite being hit at least five times, at least long enough for other destroyers to come and drive the Vichy vessels off. The damage she incurred saw Janus sent to South Africa for repairs, which would last until early 1942, with that particular year passing basically in convoy escort and exercise missions. Janus celebrated the end of 1942 by helping to sink the Italian torpedo boat Lupo. Then, at some point in 1943, Janus was reassigned for a while to the home fleet, which included running supplies to Spitsbergen. And then at the end of the year, she was assigned to support the Allied landings at Anzio, back in the Mediterranean. She would provide two days of constant, accurate fire support, expending over 500 rounds of her 4.7-inch ammunition stocks. But on the 20th of January, she was hit by a large projectile of some sort that caused her to sink in under 20 minutes, with only 80 survivors from a nearly 200-man crew. Initially, this damage was credited to a Fritz X guided bomb, but subsequent examination of the records and the type of damage she suffered indicate that it was actually far more likely to be an HS-293 anti-shipping missile or a torpedo dropped by a Heinkel 111, as a Fritz X hitting a destroyer would probably have just gone straight through deep underwater and then exploded. 
given that one of her magazines was detonated by whatever hit her, and a sister ship that was hit with an HS-239 managed to make it back to harbour without too many problems, it seems most likely that the culprit was a torpedo which impacted below the waterline low enough to set off the magazine. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.